Hello, this is Tom Harris of the International Climate Science Coalition. I'm speaking to you from a very cold and blustery Ottawa late in the day on December 14th. This is perhaps a preview of what much of the world will be like in about 20 years as some of the forecasts of scientists come true. What they're saying is that we're headed for a very long period, a long gradual cooling period due to several factors. First of all, the sun is going through a minimum right now where indeed there are fewer sunspots than there has been for a very long time. So the net input of radiation to the planet has greatly dropped and that is uh, very likely to increase cloudiness for quite complex reasons as well. We're also going into a negative phase. We're already in the negative phase of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. And finally, we're in a La Nina. Okay, now that's a short-term event that occurs just with a period periodicity of two to seven years, but that's going to make things colder for a while, as has the increase in volcanic activity across the northern hemisphere. So we may indeed see much of the world uh, entering into Ottawa-like conditions over the next few years. Some scientists are even saying that this will indeed last up until easily into the 2030s, at which time the solar cycle is forecast to be much cooler and much uh, lower, that is, than is even currently forecast in the next couple of decades. So this kind of freezing weather, and I'm freezing my hand holding this little camera, uh, may in fact become much more common. I'm going to change hands as I warm my hand up in my pocket here to continue to talk to you about the Cancun Climate Conference. One of the things that concerns me most and many other people is the fact that there were aspirational targets established, things like we had planned to do this, we will have $100 billion a year a uh, green fund established. Uh, people on the right are often saying, well, there's nothing definite, there's nothing legal, nothing binding has been established, so there's nothing to worry about. I would not take that optimistic an attitude. If you look at the uh, Copenhagen Accord, for example, that was not legally binding, uh, but indeed Canada just gave in October $400 million to fulfill our so-called commitments under the Copenhagen Accord. Unfortunately, 90% of that uh, $400 million is going to stopping climate change, which of course is ridiculous and impossible. Only about 10% went, went to adaptation of Canada's $400 million. And that's unfortunate because in the Copenhagen Accord itself, it actually says that it should be divided about 50-50. But across the world, that is a very typical ratio, the 90 to 10 ratio of stopping climate change funding to helping people adapt to climate change. Now, of course, helping people adapt to climate change is a very sensible thing, and it's something that humans have done throughout the eons. And there's no question that developing countries need that kind of help. But the, the focus right now, unfortunately, and for many years, has been stopping climate change, which, of course, is impossible, and the adaptation funding has suffered as a result.